What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the AJ Plays channel, and today I'm bringing you guys a video that, uh, this is another one that, you know, I've had in mind for a little while, but you can't really do it till each team has played their nine games in the first half of the MLW season. We have six guys, like, it was originally five, and then I realized there's one guy I can't really not mention. So we have six candidates that we we're going to go over today. These are the top six MVP candidates at this point in the 2023 MLW season. There have been some guys who have really stood out from the rest, and a lot of them deserved it. We expected them to do so. And a few of them we actually didn't really see coming. Like, there is a few that I'm going to mention that, you know what? At the beginning of the season, if you told me they'd be in this position right now, I would not have believed you. But anyways, we're going to jump right in to the reason that the Eagles are pretty much standing alive at this point. I mean, no disrespect to Waylon, but let's just start with the guy who we got to give props to the most. Kicking things off, the first one on this list, we have Dallas Allen. Now, this is, guy is pretty much one of the main reasons the Eagles are still afloat in any kind of playoff race at this point. After going 1-5 in the first two slates, they really bounced back, and that was mainly part to Dallas Allen's performance. This is a guy who really stepped up in 2022. He definitely emerged, and he took that starting pigeon job from Daniel Schultz. Over this past offseason, he lost a crap ton of weight, and he's in much better physical condition, so we definitely expected him to be a lot better this season. And let's be honest, he's been up at that same pace that he was last year if not a little bit better especially on the mound he is top five in every single pitching stat top 10 in every single hitting stat except oh there's a few that he's missing out on however one bad series can really deflate your stats overall dallas is pretty much the main reason why these eagles are still afloat in the playoff race because let's be dead honest here there have been a few different eagles that have been struggling a few Eagles that are actually missing in action, but Dallas has been consistent all the way throughout. And he, like his play overall and him helping the Eagles get to where they are right now, it has him deserving to be in the MVP conversation. And being 100% honest with you, I would never have seen this guy being an MVP candidate this season. Brendan Jorgensen has had the most up and down MLW career. When he first was drafted in 2020, for the first half, he was a stud, all-star appearance, 100% guaranteed. Second half, he was missing for a series. He didn't really have that much of an impact, and Chris Cheatham took over. 21 and 22, he was the third best player on that Gators team behind Cheatham and Zerlag. This season, he shot out of the gate strong. He has four home runs, second most in the league, second best average. Pitching-wise, again, his stats just took a hit against the Diamondbacks, but if you exclude that series, he has just been dominant on both sides of the ball throughout i cannot make an mvp candidate video and not mention how surprisingly good brendan jorgensen has been for this gators team because let's be dead honest right now chris cheatham has not been that great this season brendan jorgensen is doing what cheatham has done in the past but the thing is the team's just not clicking right now the gators are not that great but jorgensen is still firing on all cylinders every single game every single series that he's out there so as much as the gators aren't that great you know what it's jorgensen and he's still putting up those mvp caliber numbers will he possibly win it on a team that misses the playoffs he probably won't but it's still worth a mention to show how well he's done in a season that we definitely did not expect this happening now, I have to mention MLW's best player every single time. I'm sorry. Yes, the stats, especially hitting-wise, might not show that, you know, he's definitely one of the better guys in the league. 13th in average, if tied for 15th in home runs, top 10 in RBIs, you know, his OP, OBP and slugging are probably above league average. His pitching, though, Jimmy Norp, again, he is part of a, the best 1-2 tandem in the league right now between him and Flood. Top five in every single category other than strikeouts, bro. This guy has been absolutely dominating throughout the entire season. Jimmy Norp, overall, he has propelled his team to become 8-1. and one. He has done incredible for his team, and he's really helped them emerge. Something that you don't see in stats is leadership quality. And I'm not saying just because, you know, he's a great leader means he should be the MVP. But his stats back it up, and he's definitely a great player in MLW that he's deserving of an MVP pretty much every single season because of what he can do for the Diamondbacks. Stats might not show it here, but Jimmy Norb has a much more significant impact to the Diamondbacks' overall team. Therefore, at least he is deserving of a mention in the MVP conversation. And now we have Kyle Schultz. Now, this is a guy who in the first two slates was absolutely dominating everybody and everything. He had approximately a 450, around a 450 average. He was leading the league in a lot of different stats. This past series against the Magic, Walgate and Bonham had him figured out a little bit. And at the end of the day, Schultz really didn't like maintain those batting stats from the first little bit of the season. However, it should be mentioned how well Kyle Schultz has done this season. He was one of the leading bow getters for the All-Star game. This is Kyle's probably best season since his 2018 MVP caliber season where he ended up winning that MVP 
Kyle Schultz has not been this good in half a decade. I don't care that he won the MVP in 2020. I think this is Kyle's best season since that 2018 campaign where he practically dragged his team to go to the finish line and win that World Series. This season though, as much as the stats might not show it, Kyle Schultz has had a major impact and he has stayed elite along with the rest of the league in a time where we thought this guy was slowly falling off. Overall, Kyle Schultz definitely deserving of an MVP mention in this conversation, for sure. I got two more candidates, and these are my two front runners for the award to win it right now. And let's be honest, this second one, I had no idea he would come out and shoot onto the scene like he did this year. But let's just talk about how dominant Jordan Robles has been right now. Even when the Mallards got swept by the Wildcats, even though the Mallards are 4-5 and five right now, this guy's stats have been among the most elite in the league. League leading OBP. He's got one of the highest averages in the league. He's doing well on the pitching side. Again, this is the best player in the country. I still say Jimmy Norp is the best based on the impact he has like to his team and what he can do for the Diamondbacks as a collective, not just as a player himself. But Robles as a player is among the best in the country, if not the best. Robles continues to put up incredible stats and always be with the elitist in the league. And if he wasn't in the conversation last year, Robles definitely has to be in there this year. The two-headed monster of him and Coughlin continue to drive the Mallers to success, currently second in the NL. And they should continue to be at full strength, full speed ahead, heading into the second half. If Robles is truly an MVP and truly a leader, he will be able to elevate this team to go ahead and win a World Series by the end of this season. Let's just see how that goes. You could say I'm crazy. You could say I don't know what I'm talking about, but I don't want to hear that because this guy, Jackson Pearson, where the hell did he come from this season? The second best player on the Wildcats, if not one of the best. I personally think him and Robles are literally the front runners right now for the MVP. I'm not even joking because Jackson Pearson, hitting wise, has been even better than his previous seasons. He has continued to maintain a steady average. He's hit for power. He's hit for contact. He's got one of the best OPSs in the league. He's top three in both slugging and OBP. There's not many guys who can actually say that. And as for pitching, this guy has emerged as a pitcher this season. Second one behind Kyle Schultz. Nick Saylor has fallen out of the picture. And when Kyle Schultz has struggled, Pearson's there to pick up the pieces and get his team out of jams, get his team out of innings. I don't know where this kid has come from. I don't know what he's been doing. But whatever he's been doing... Is just working. Jackson Pearson somehow is an MVP candidate for this MLW season. I'm not even joking. Between him and Robles right now, it's going to be a close race to the finish. And if Pearson keeps us up, we got to give the guy props. This is more than an all-star appearance. This isn't even a most improved. This is an MVP caliber season that we are seeing right now from Jackson Pearson. All in all, those are my six candidates for the MLW MVP race at this point in 2023. You got Dallas who has continued to keep up his dominant presence on both sides of the game. Brendan Jorgensen has had an incredible bounce back season and is definitely putting up those MVP caliber numbers. Kyle Schultz is having his best season since 2018 and Jimmy Norp has always been a fantastic leader for his team. But you have two main front runners right now. That's Jordan Robles, the best player in the country who continues to put up dominant numbers across the board on every side of the ball and is currently trying to lead his Mallards to that MLW title. And Jackson Pearson, a young two-way player who has shot onto the scene. He's doing everything right and bailing his team out of jams when they need it. Robles and Pearson, I can see those two guys battling down the stretch for that MVP award. Any of these six guys can definitely take it with good performances in this second half. Let's see how it goes. But these are my six right now, the six best players in MLW at this moment, in my opinion. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. These are definitely a few hot takes, especially the Jackson Pearson one. You got to hear me out on that. You got to look at the stats and you got to see what he's done for the Wildcats. Anyways, y'all, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to see you guys all next time. Peace out, y'all.